We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we're going to finish this Tau drone by completing the base. The model itself has a lot of cool techno glowy elements to it. However, I wanted the base to look a little bit more like a worn industrial complex. So that's what we're going to be doing. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave them down below in the comments. All right, this mini has been prepped by being primed and then there was some slop over from when I did the airbrushing process. So I went ahead and painted it with Abaddon black so I have a nice flat black to start out with. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to dry brush the entire base with lead belcher. I'm using a pretty large dry brush I want to make sure that my bristles are nice and soft and that I'm doing lots of little small layers of paint so that I don't get any kind of streaks. However, I'm not super concerned with making sure that everything has one solid consistent color. It's okay if some areas are a little bit more concentrated with the lead belcher and some areas have a little bit of that Abaddon black continuing to show through. Here's the base after the dry brushing process has been completed. It was a very quick, easy way to get this step done. And all of this color variation is just going to contribute to the worn look of the base. Now, because I want this to have a very natural weathered look, I'm going to be applying a lot of small layers and lots of different colors to kind of create a very natural flow to the way the base works. Our first step to weathering the metal is going to be to add a little bit of Nuln oil. Now I'm not going to be applying this to the entire base. I just want to apply it to a few of the seams in some of the different elements and then smooth it out. So I'm painting the paint as it is out of the pot and then I'm quickly wiping my brush off and then using that cleaner brush to quickly blend the transition. I do want to apply it on all of this hatching area just because I lost a few of the sh deep shadows when I did the dry brush. And then I'm going to do one more layer just in the cracks to make sure things fade to a really nice controlled dark. After we're done with the Nuln Oil, we're going to be doing a very similar process with this Bieltang Green. And I'm only going to be using this green on the lower flat surfaces of the base. So this isn't going over the entire thing. And I'm going to do it very lightly. Here's the base after the Bieltang Green has been applied. It may be looking a little green now, but that's going to blend in as soon as we apply some of the other layers. The next paint we're gonna apply is gonna be Reichland Flesh Shade. Now I'm going to be applying this to almost the entire base. I really wanna make sure that it gets down into the nooks and crannies of this crosshatch area. I'm also going to be applying it lightly onto the green. And then because I like the tint that it's giving to the metal, I'm going to apply it to this raised area as well. Here's the base after the flesh shade has been applied. The glazes are still drying a little bit, but you can start to see all of the colors starting to blend together a little bit. The next thing that we're going to do is add a little bit of fugit orange. We're gonna be very light with this paint compared to some of the other shades that we've added. We're just going to be applying this to one corner of this crosshatch area and this raised section as well. Okay, at this point, we're very close to being done with our metal weathering. So we're gonna add just a hint of hazard stripes and we're going to start using Tau Light Ochre. This was mixed with a little bit of Lamian Medium just to help flow. And we're gonna very roughly block out just a few rectangular sections on this raised strip. They don't have to be neat and the color does not have to be even. I want them to look like they're very worn. So in fact, I'm gonna make sure that I don't necessarily apply this to the entire square. I'm going to leave some areas where the paint isn't applied and the metal's entirely showing through and some areas where the paint is very faded. Here's the blocking of the hazard stripes. You can see it's very messy at the moment. The next thing we wanna do is highlight with Averland Sunset. This highlight's gonna be applied in the very same way we did with our Tau Light Ochre. It's gonna be very streaky, very patchy. I'm not concerned with making sure that the entire area is 
consistently colored. I just want to create a very weathered, dark looking yellow. After the Aberlin Sunset, you can see it's starting to look a little bit more like faded caution stripes. We're going to add one final yellow highlight using Uriel Yellow. I don't want to go any brighter than that. And this is going to be applied very sparingly in just a few areas to just give it a little bit of a streaky highlight, make it seem a little bit more bright yellow and less of an earthy orange. Here you can see these caution stripes after the yellow's been done. We're going to do a little bit of lead belcher. Now I'm going to apply this mostly to the edges and also in any of the areas that I purposefully left without their yellow as if the paint had faded. Adding this shiny metal on top of the metal that we've really dulled down is just going to sell the look of scratched worn paint even further. In fact, I want to add one or two of these scratches in some of the areas that aren't even yellow, just to kind of push the optical illusion even further. All right, now that we have our faded caution stripes, we're going to do a little bit more weathering to blend them into the rest of the base. We want to apply a little bit of Reichlin Flesh Shade over the entire top of the caution stripes. And then we're also going to put a little bit on some of the flat areas around it to make it blend in together a little bit better. Here you can see the base after the Raiklin Flesh Shade has been applied. Right now it's looking a little bit dingy and that's perfect. We're actually going to push that even a little bit further right now. For this next step, instead of using one of the Citadel shades, we're going to use Dawnstone and we're going to kind of mix our own shade to apply. So I have a little bit of Dawnstone on my palette and I have a little bit of Lamian Medium on my palette and I'm going to mix it until it's about two parts Lamian Medium, one part Dawnstone. So I get a really thin paint that I can apply to kind of tone down the luster a little bit. Now I'm going to apply this over most of the metallic areas of the base. I'm not going to be hitting the area with the caution stripes. And I'm not necessarily going to get all of this crosshatch area. I just want to make sure that I get a little section in the very middle, as well as the middle area right here, right next to the rod. Adding this matte paint over the top is really going to take a lot of the shininess out of the metallic. All right, once we've done our Dawnstone, we're gonna add one final shade of Nuln Oil. And I want to apply this on top of all the areas I just hit with the Dawnstone. Because even though I wanted to tone down the metallic, I didn't necessarily want to lose any of the depths of the shadows. So by putting a little bit of this Nuln Oil on top and spreading it around, making sure it gets into the crevices especially, I'm going to get a lot of those shadows back. The very last step is for us to add a little bit of Abaddon Black to the rod. And also there's a very small lip around the edge, but we want to make sure that that is all flat black and it's really going to make a difference versus it being really sloppy and multiple shades of gray and silver right now. All right, here is that weathered industrial base entirely done. I'll give it a little bit of a twirl for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I go through the steps of painting some weathered bullet casings in the mini warming vault and the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, go ahead and click the link. You can sign up for a seven day free trial and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial and happy wargaming.